and welcome back to another Briar customization video! As I mentioned in my Briarfest video, Hamilton is my favorite Briar mold. So today I will finally be doing a customization on him. Well, not him, his friend Mark of Charm, I'm not that crazy. I do like his original mane, but I love sculpting hair, so I couldn't resist making him a new one. So off to the Dremel. Here I'm using a cutting disc to get the bulk of it off. Of course I make sure to wear a respirator, gloves, long sleeves, and eye protection. Once that's off, I smooth it down with a sanding drum. Some of the mane comes down to the shoulder so I get that part too. For the armature, I start by drilling holes in the neck and then gluing wires in as a base. I'm using some floral wire as well as some E6000 glue. With that dry, I can add the flowing pieces coming off. I want a long and elegant look to match the tail. I bend and add more wire until it's looking how I want. I usually add glue or tape as a base, but these pieces are so thin I didn't want it to become too bulky. I start laying my Aves two-part epoxy in noodle sections. I'm starting at the bottom so that the hair at the top can flow over it for a more natural look. Once it's covering the wire and smoothed with alcohol, I sculpt it and add details with my X-Acto knife.
sometimes it won't lay exactly right, so I tape it in place while it hardens. Once that's all hardened, I can prime with my Duplicolor Sandable Primer. Now we're ready to airbrush. Firstly, I do a few layers of white for a good base. I'm still on the hunt for a good white primer, but for now this will do. I decided I want to do a buckskin as my base coat since it's one of my favorite colors. I also want to do a Tobiano pattern since I found some great reference pictures. This was also before the Stagecoach Surprise Buckskin they released at Briarfest, but they end up being pretty different even if they are the same in theory. I dry with a hair dryer to speed up the process. I start with a very light yellow. Next I start shading with a slightly darker shade with more orange. I will be adding pastels so I don't want to go too dark, just as a good base. Next I can add that buckskin goodness, the black points and tail.
I did add some faint done markings on the legs, so if you're going for a true buckskin, don't do that. I just think they're really fun. Once that was all dry, I sealed it with matte spray. I used Mr. Super Clear. Now it's time for the pastels. I'm using Pan Pastel and applying it with eyeshadow brushes. Looking back, this shade is probably a little bit too saturated for my liking, but the camera's making it look extra crazy here. Once I have good coverage, I go in with brown to shade in all the pretty sculptural details. Then I can take my kneaded eraser and add dapples and highlights. Definitely make sure to look at photos for this. Pay attention to where the dapples get bigger and smaller and change shape. Then I seal that off camera and it's on to the next side. I can add the markings with my Prismacolor pencils. I'm using an in-between shade to mark the outlines, and then I go over with the white. But I don't know if I really like the effect on buckskin. I feel like it works better on bays. Definitely pay attention to the hair direction when doing this, and again, lots of references. Even if you can't find the exact pattern you want on that color, you can get an idea from a different horse. Once I had a good outline started, I can fill it in with my golden white acrylic. I make sure to thin it with water. I do need lots of layers for coverage, even on a lighter horse like this.
Right now he's looking like a peacock Appaloosa. Maybe I'll have to make one of those in the future. I paint in the main with black Liquitex acrylic. And make sure to leave more white since I will be using black pastels to blend the transition. For the blaze I'm giving him some distal spots since there will be some on the legs. I add some tiny hairs with black. For the eyes, I start by painting them completely white. Add pink to the corners.
Next, I block in the black until it's the size I want. For his brown eyes, I make a dark oval, and while that's still wet, I add light beige to the bottom. I add a few more highlighting specks once it's dry. Next I add the black pastel to blend the transition in the main. I'm using some ColourPop eyeshadow for the nose blush. I remove any excess with my kneaded eraser. I also blush under the front legs. Next, I paint on the distal spots on the legs. I go back over them slightly smaller so that they will all have the gray transitional hairs on the edges. On to the hooves. I start with this beige base. It's pretty thin, so I need at least four layers.
I take a dry brush and paint on white streaks. I use the same technique to add the striping, making sure to add vertical and horizontal streaks in layers. For the bottom of the hoof, I fill in the dark areas first, especially the frog. I add white highlights. While that dries, I add some white to the top and blend it down. Then I can go back in and add the little veining on the inside. Don't forget those chestnuts. Since golden acrylic tends to be shiny, I cover the white markings in a few layers of Liquitex matte varnish. Off camera, I seal it all with my tester's gloss spray. Then I gloss the hooves, eyes, and nostrils with Liquitex gloss varnish. Now you may have noticed this black dorsal stripe counter shading-ish thing on his back. Yeah, it wasn't really working for me, so I blended it into the pinto markings on his back. I made sure to seal everything again and he's good to go, nothing to see here. And with that, it's time for the final result. Here's the before. And here's the after. I think he came out pretty handsome. He definitely has oodles of details. I suspect I'll end up doing more on this amazing mold in the future at some point. Thank you for watching! Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more projects!